Give it up for Frank Trainer. So I have three things in common with Superman. The first one is that I believe in the American way, and, and that's why many, many years ago I decided that I wanted to move to the United States and take a job away from an American, because that's the Latin American way. <laughs> so a way to do that for me was to start a job in the advertising industry as a creative, knowing that eventually I could network my way into getting a job in the US and moving here, but I had to wait a bunch of years for my first opportunity. And then it came in at the end of 2011 when uh, my bosses came to me asking me to go to Miami for one week to work with all the creatives, the best creatives of all the agencies in the Latin American network to pitch and win a huge new account with a huge international bank, like lots of money for them, not for me. Um, and, and, and they're not asking me to go because I'm the, the best creative they have. No, they're asking me. It's not like, like somebody went to, to, to their office and, and they asked my bosses, hey, who could we send? And they both went, let's send Frank. And they high-fived in the air and they came to ask me, you got to go represent us right now. And it was like a beautiful heroic moment. No, my boss came to my office, opened the door with this complete face of defeat and just went, Please tell me you have a passport with a tourist visa to enter the US, because I don't know who to ask anymore. <laughs> and that's how I got my opportunity to come to the US and network. But here's the thing, I can't fuck this up, which is a thing that sometimes I tend to do. We leave on a Sunday because we have to start working on, on a Monday, and at the airport I meet the guy that I'm traveling with. Now, he's not from my team, so I don't know this man at all. All I know is that besides both of us being advertising creatives, we're both musicians as well, mostly because he won't shut up about his band being on MTV <laughs> while I tell him that my band brought like 15 people to our last concert. You know, and then we, I tell him that when we get to Miami, I'm going to see some friends that I have there, and he tells me that he doesn't know anyone in Miami, so I invite him to tag along, because I may not be on MTV, but at least I have friends. <laughs> so we get to Miami, we check in in the hotel, and then we go to my friend's house, and we hang out there, and we have a good time. And then before we leave, I remember that my friend told me that he has a Vespa scooter that I can borrow to move around Miami that week, because I have no car. And, uh, I've never ridden a motorcycle before in my life, but how hard can it be? It's a Vespa. It's pretty much an overweight bicycle, right? I mean, the best thing that could happen is that I can feel like Jennifer Coolidge and the guy from Napoleon Dynamite in White Lotus, like in Sicily, but in Miami. Isn't that great? I'm gonna look more like, instead of Peppa Pig, I'm gonna look more like Kermit the Frog, but you know, that's, I'll take it. So we leave the apartment and we go to the garage of the building and I, I put the helmet on my head as a joke as a joke because who needs a helmet to ride a Vespa scooter, a fat motorcycle in, 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 in a garage, right? So we, we make it to, to the garage and, and I get on the Vespa and then my friend goes, this is pretty simple. It's like driving a car with stick. Have you ever, do you know how to do that? I'm like, do I know how to drive stick? <laughs> do, 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 I, do I know? What kind of question is that to ask? Um, do I know how to drive stick? I'm, so it's, it's very simple. So you, you, you know with the clutch and then you put first and then you start let going of the clutch and you start pressing the gas and you get going. Oh yeah, that's simple. So I get on the thing and I expect it to go nice and easy like a car. And instead of that, in a second, I'm going at a million miles per hour <laughs> towards a black BMW that I seriously cannot afford and I have no insurance in this foreign country that is not mine. And I suddenly realized my friend never told me how to stop the freaking Vespa. And I don't know what to do. I have a million things around me. This is clearly not like a car. I'm not Jennifer Coolidge or the guy from Napoleon Dynamite. So the only thing that I can think of doing is jumping off, hitting this concrete pillar really hard with my head that I luckily protected with a helmet as a joke, <laughs> as a joke. And then I fall to the ground really hard Hard. But again, because I'm a man, I have to hide everything that is happening to me. So I get up and I just look at my friends and I go, I'm okay. I'm not okay. I'm in a lot of pain and I can't 
continued living right now. So they take me back to the apartment and they tell me that I have to go to the hospital, to the ER, and, and my coworker is freaking the fuck out, like the TV guy is freaking out because he thinks if you go to, if you go to the ER, the, the, the doctors are going to, to call the cops because yes, I did smoke like a couple of puffs of weed be, like two hours before riding the motorcycle and they're gonna call the cops and we're gonna get in trouble, we're gonna get fired and I'm like, how can you think that? How, why would the, the, the fucking doctors even know that I smoke weed before doing that? Like, this guy's supposed to be smarter than me. He's more successful than me. He's been on MTV. I bet this is one of those guys that, 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 that when, when you tell him that you like smoking weed, they're like, um, I don't need to smoke weed to have fun. <laughs> it's fine. I don't need to have fun when I smoke weed, honestly, so don't worry about it. I bet you he's one of those guys that says, like, like, like marijuana is a gateway to cocaine, which is bullshit. Saying that marijuana is a gateway to cocaine is like saying that biting your nails leads to cannibalism. And you'd be like, mmm, 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 I wonder what children taste like. <laughs> I bet you he says, marijuana is a gateway to cocaine, which is a stupid at saying that masturbation leads to rape. Mmm. Mm, mm. I wonder what children taste like. <laughs> okay, salty is the answer. I'm sorry, I, I, this is a joke for a different type of audience, I'm realizing now. I always do it in like raunchy dive bars. I'm like, yeah, children, but not here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So I get really paranoid and I don't want my coworker you know, to freak out any more than he is. So uh, I, I, I tell him, you know, let's go back to the hotel. And, 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 and I have to come up with a lie so that we don't get in trouble at work. And that is the second thing that I have in common with Superman. Um, I don't know if you know this about Superman, but he and I, we can't lie. We were not born with that ability. In the comic books, in the movies, Superman cannot lie, which is why his attempt at lying when he tries to cover his identity is so Bad, like it's a hip. Uh, uh, I'm gonna wear some glasses and uh, I'm gonna get a job uh, as, as a reporter, yeah. And uh, I'm going to harass a co worker into being my wife, yeah. Uh, that's bullshit. Like the lie that I come up with right there and then on the spot, and I tell my co worker, don't worry about it, listen to me. Tomorrow, uh, you go to work and uh, they know that we're not friends, we don't know each other. You just tell them that I was. Uh, on, on my own with, with, with my friend, yes, with my friend, and uh, 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 he was driving the motorcycle, not me, he was driving the best one. I was sitting, I was sitting behind him, like driving on for my sweet life. Uh, but then we were going a, a little too fast, and then we went over a speed bump. Yeah, yeah, we went over a speed bump pretty fast, and I fell backwards. And tomorrow, when the two puffs of weed were off, I'm going to go to the hospital. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be fine. And he agrees with me, and, and uh, then we leave my friend's apartment, we go back to the hotel, and we make it to the hotel, and he helps me basically get however we can to my bedroom, because I cannot walk anymore. And he sits me on my bed in the hotel. And now, this is a man that I basically met that morning for the first time in my life, but before he leaves my room, there is one more thing that I need for him, from him. And uh, so I just look at him and I, and I go, before you go, can you help me take off my pants? I can't do it on my own. <laughs> and as he reluctantly starts taking off my pants, I just whisper in his ear, well, guess we're going to have to lie about this too now, right? <laughs> he didn't find it so funny. <laughs> so the next morning I, I get up and I, 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 I make my way to the hospital in, in a taxi. It's the horrible ordeal, just dragging myself on the, on the floor to the top car. And uh, when I get to the hospital, I find out that I broke my collarbone, two ribs, and I cracked the head of the femur where it connects to the hip. Being the man of steel is clearly not the third thing that I have in common with Superman. <laughs> it's not at all. And uh, then I learned that the US has an opioid crisis for a really good reason, because the doctor gives me these painkillers, this amazing painkillers that I would have never gotten in my country. They're so expensive. You know what I would have gotten in my country? Uh, free healthcare. Uh, but here I get these you know, expensive pills. And uh, they're so good that they give me enough energy to wake up every morning and walk the seven blocks between the hotel and the office, work for eight hours straight, uh, network to get a job in the US and maybe move here, keep up the lay about the exit, and then walk the seven blocks back to the hotel, get a slice of pizza, and then plumb it on the bed only to wake up and do it all again the same the next day for the next the rest of the week, and it worked. We won the account, and my bosses back home said that they got a call saying that I did a great job. Well, we did a great job, the MTV guy too. And then I got cocky, because clearly maybe I can lie, maybe I'm not that much like Superman in that sense, and maybe I will get a job in the US because I did such a good job networking and then showing myself. And time goes by, and I, I don't get a call, I don't get anything, but I'm still very cocky. And then one day, one of my, the guys in my team just is like tired of my arrogance. He just tells me, listen, shut the fuck up, I'm tired of you. You know what happened? 
everyone knows about your accident. The night that the accident happened, when you went back to the hotel and the guy left you in your room, he went back to his room and he called the VP of the company and he told him all the truth about what happened. Say goodbye to getting a job in the US now. You're lucky you didn't get fired. MTV sold me out. I thought taking off my pants, building a breakable bone between us, but I guess I was wrong. And yes, I didn't get a job then. But many years later, I, I, I got a job offer from Los Angeles from an agency here where a friend of mine from Argentina was working and he recommended me, so I got a job and I moved here because I may not be an MTV, but at least I have friends. <laughs> and the visa that they gave me to live in this country is the O-1 visa, that's the talent visa that they give artists. And the legal definition of that visa is alien with extraordinary abilities. <laughs> and that, that is the third thing that I have in common with Superman.